Hey guys, Long Haul Larry here with Big Blue. We are in Front Royal, Virginia. It is September 19th, 2018. 10, 15 a.m. We are all loaded, or unloaded. Good to go. Had a little bit of an issue this morning. I'll tell you about it in a second. Um, let's see if we can find a trailer. These guys are really prominent here right now. I don't know if you've ever heard uh, me talk on John's channel about this, but I'll tell you guys a little story. I'm looking for a certain company trailer. I don't see one right here. There was one sitting right there. Might see one out here in the lot. I have been here before. Um, this was actually my first delivery. Like I delivered my first load right here on the on the uh, on the right. I believe these are trailers. Yep. Those ones with the blue stripe, those Van Vike trailers. Um, it's V A N space W K or W Y K. <clears throat> it was the first load that I ever delivered as an independent trucker. I was getting all my permits in line and everything else, mail, you know, mail and all that stuff. I got my last permit that I was legal to drive. And it came in the mail like at one o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon, whatever. And so I was like, I'm ready to go. So I I um, jumped on the computer and looked at some load boards and I found a load on there. And I found this load and I gave him a call and it came up to here. I didn't realize this was a place so I pulled in here last night and I'm like, this is where I was. This is my first load. And I got this, I called them up and the lady was, was like, are you empty? Because she asked where I was and I said, yep, I'm here. And she goes, are you empty? And I said, yeah, I'm ready to go. She goes, okay, we just had somebody to drop off this load. We could pay you extra. We need you to get going on it now. I'm like, no problem. And she goes, can you roll right now? And she goes, and we'll fax the stuff to you and, you know, and take care of all the paperwork while you're going there because the place is going to close. I said, okay. I figured my wife could sign the paperwork and fax back to him, and I took off. I wasn't running for it, and they skipped the first pickup, and I went to the second one because the second place was going to close. I got there, loaded it up. The lady was calling me on my cell phone. You know, everything is all good. You're good to go and everything. She goes, the second place is open until whenever. So she goes, just call me if you have a problem. Otherwise, I'll talk to you in the morning. I was like, okay. So I went to the second place, got loaded up. And it was a two-stop pickup. And got loaded up, and I took off and started running out here. I was, I, It was like a pickup like a Monday evening or whatever. And it was delivering out here, I think it was Wednesday evening or maybe Tuesday evening, actually. I think it was Tuesday evening. I think it was supposed to deliver at like 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning, something like that. And I drove all the way out here, got out here, I talked to her in the morning, and, I see, and she's like, are you going to make the pickup or the drop-off? I said, yep, I'll make it. We're all good to go. She's like, cool. She goes, I appreciate you taking care of this and everything else and getting everything. This no problem. And I ran out here. I checked in the place and gave them my appointment number, and they said, you have no appointment. So I called up the lady with her cell phone and woke her up and I told her what was going on. And she's like, well, I hate to say this, but there's really nothing I can do. She goes, there's nobody there. I think she tried calling out here or something. Hang on, I'll be right back.
So anywho, I um All right, let me go close the door quick. Well, anywho, um, I called out to the lady, told her what was going on. She called out here, she called me back, like an hour later or whatever, and she goes, I got really bad news. And I said, what's the bad news? And she goes, something has happened. I don't know what's going on. She goes, but you're right. They don't have, um, they don't have an appointment for you. And she goes, and there's nobody there for me to talk to, to get you worked in. She goes, so, she goes, there's really nothing I can do until morning. And she goes, I hate to say it, but I'm gonna need you just to hang out till morning and we'll get this all straightened out. She goes, of course, we'll pay you detention. And I, I was like, okay. I said, you know, I guess that's what I'll end up doing. And so I went to sleep. And morning time came around and she called me at like 8.15 in the morning on Easter time. And she called me up and she goes, how are we doing? I said, I'm doing fine. I said, got me a night of sleep. She goes, well, I hate to tell you this, but you're gonna get more sleep. And I said, okay. I said, what's going on? She goes, I'm not really sure what happened. I gotta stop and pull that. It's the glass plate that's in my microwave. I'm just gonna stop here real quick. I gotta pull that out of there. That'll drive me nuts going all the way down. I keep forgetting to pull that thing out after I'm parked for a while. I make some food and then I forget to pull this out. So, I said, what's happening here? And she goes, I don't know what really happened. She goes, but, she goes, somehow your appointment was taken out, it was taken away. And she goes, and the next earliest appointment I can get you is for tomorrow. She goes, I'm so sorry. She goes, I'm trying to figure out what happened. And I said, okay. And I said, well, I need to go. I said, because I got a call. I says, I, um, I have another load that I've booked today. And I said, so I need to call them quick. And she's like, well, you're booked on another one? I said, yep. And I said, I'm gonna have to call them up, cancel this. I said, I don't know what's gonna happen. And she's like, well, you're gonna get charged a fee for canceling? And I said, I said, I don't know. I said, we'll find out. And she goes, well, we'll definitely take care of you on this. You know, and you hear that all the time from, um, brokers and stuff like oh we'll take care of you and it never happens but I just kind of okay yeah we'll, we'll talk about it later and so I called up the other company and told them and this guy yelled and screamed at me and everything else and I'm like you know I'm here I don't know what the deal is I can't get unloaded so how am I supposed to reload today if I can't get unloaded today so so I um, took an earful from him and a little while later the lady called me up and she goes, well, how'd it go? And I said, well, the guy yelled at me and everything else. And she goes, is he gonna charge you? I don't know if he's gonna charge me or not. He was yelling and screaming at me. I don't know what's gonna happen. He was saying all kinds of things. And she goes, well, I'm telling you, we're definitely gonna take care of you. And I said, it's not a problem. And she goes, well, I found out what happened. I said, oh, okay. And I said, is that a screw up over here or something, you know? Because they always blame the other people. And she goes, no. She goes, that guy called and canceled on this load at the very last second. And then we put it, I found you and I put it on you, but I wasn't at the office. And she goes, so, she goes, I, I was talking to you on my cell phone. I wasn't at the office. They entered the stuff in the computer. And you got all loaded, I mean, you talked a couple times, and then next and then next morning I came in, and 
I talked to you and everything was good and you're gonna make it and everything so it was all good well that night night dispatch didn't know that I had talked to you and booked this with you and everything was good to go and they saw the load hadn't been picked up in the computer system so we get charged if we don't show up on time for a load so she called this place up out here, the Cisco up, she called them up and she canceled the appointment. And she goes, That's, that way we wouldn't have got charged a fee for not showing up for the appointment. And I said, oh, okay. And she goes, so it's totally our fault. And I said, okay. I said, well, you know, what time is my appointment tomorrow? And she told me it was like 10, 11, noon, whatever it was. And I said, okay. And I said, that's fine. And she goes, well, what's your rate for detention? And I told her, I said, $50 an hour. And she goes, okay. She go, And I says, I says, it's not a problem. I said, things happen. I says, I'll just hang out out here and we'll get it unloaded. I'll try to find another load tomorrow and pick it up tomorrow afternoon or something. And, and uh, life will go on. I said, we'll work through it. And she goes, okay. And Austin, she goes, can I put you on hold? And I said, sure. And I sat on hold for quite a while. <clears throat> and then Austin, she came back on the phone. She goes, the boss here wants to talk to you. And I was like, it's okay. It's not a problem. And she goes, I know, I know, but he just wants to talk to you. And I said, okay, whatever. So she transferred me to some guy. And I guess he was the owner of Van Vyke Trucking. And she transferred me to him and he sat there talking to me and he's like, how are things going? I said, oh, it's fine. I said, so I'm just hanging out out here. And he's like, well, you know, I don't remember what her name, let's call her Crystal. He goes, uh, whoop, yellow light. He goes, uh, Crystal was saying that you were basically being about super cool about this. He goes, from what I understand, it's completely our mistake. And she was saying that you were just being so nice and everything about it and haven't raised your voice or said anything or just been polite. And I said, well, I said, what purpose does it does it give me to yell and scream about it? It's not gonna get me unloaded any faster. I said, so I said, we just gotta do the best we can and get it unloaded. I said, people make mistakes, you know? And he said, well, we're showing that you got an appointment now at whatever it was, 10, 11 o'clock the next day. And he goes, she said that you have a rate of $50 an hour. And I says, yeah. I says, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I said, we'll work, we'll work it out. And he goes, well, you've been so cool about it. He goes, and he was typing keys and everything. And he's like, I'm figuring that it, that will come out to be, I think it was like $1,600 or something like that, or $1,800 or something. And, and I was like, yeah. You know, and I was expecting him to go, oh, well, we'll, we'll give you $300 or something like this or whatever. And he uh, came back and he's taking keys and everything. He goes, you've been so good about it. You've been so polite, so professional. He goes, I'm going to give you more. And I was like, okay. And he goes, I'm also going to pay you right now. He goes, I'll give it to you right on a comp check. And he goes, that's okay. Because I, I don't want you getting... He goes, I heard you lost the load. He goes, how much did that load pay? And I said, it was 2100 And he goes, yeah. He goes, we're going to take care of you. And he goes, um, he goes, this is how many hours? He goes, now, if something happens and it goes past this hours, we'll take we'll take care of you past that. He goes, but I'm going to pay you out right now until tomorrow for detention. And I said, okay. And Austin, he goes, uh, he goes, yeah. He goes, I'm going to give you $3,300. And I was like, he goes, that way it pays for the load you lost and the attention too. He goes, I figure out 33. And I was like, um, that math don't really make sense to me. And I says, that's like a lot more than what I'm telling you. I says, I hate to say this, I says, but I think you got some numbers wrong there. And he goes, no, no. He goes, I'm giving you extra because I want to, because you're, been so professional about it he goes I want to reward you and I'm like I 
kind of feel like I'm taking advantage of you, you know? I says, I'm fine with, you know, 1800 I'll be fine with it. And the guy's like, nope, we're going to pay you 33 And he goes, all I can say is the next time you're looking for a load, call us. He's like, okay. Guys, this was my first load as an independent trucker. I had put a lot of money into repairing things, getting the trucks done, all the permits, and you know, the trailer. I bought a trailer from John, actually, over at WG Travels, and his motor, he almost blown his motor up. So I, I rebuilt the motor in the reefer, and th there was a lot of money that flew out of my hands to get this going. So I was pretty much dead broke. And this was my first run. And I ran out, and he goes, well, I'm gonna transfer you back. And he goes, and she'll take care of you. I'm like, okay. I said, well, thanks. And she came back on the phone. She goes, so he took care of you? He's talked to you? And I'm like, yeah, he's kind of like overpaying me a lot. And she goes, you've been so good about it. I went in there and talked to him and said, we need to take care of this guy because we need this guy to haul for us. And so she goes, I, I hear it's $3,300. I said, yeah, I guess so. She goes, well, you got a pen? And I'm like, yeah. And she gave me the comp check numbers and everything, the authorization numbers. and. She goes, there you go. And she goes, if anything happens and they don't unload you on time tomorrow, let us know. Otherwise, just give us a call and let us know everything is okay. I'm like, okay. So I got off the phone and I called up my wife at the time. And we were, we were dead broke, I'm going to say right now. We were dead broke. We put a lot of money out. And I called her up and I said, you got a piece of paper and a pen? And she's like, yeah. And I gave her those numbers. I told her, I said, go to a truck stop and I tell them you need a comp check. And I says, and then when you get to comp check, I'll walk you through how to fill it out. So we did that and she's like, well, what's this for? And she goes, they're paying you out on a rate? I thought you couldn't get unloaded. I says, I said, they're paying me detention already. This is gonna be on top of the rate. And she goes, are you kidding me? And I said, nope. And so they, um, they put the numbers on there and, and uh, we put it in the bank, $3,300, boom, into the bank. It was at a time when I really needed it. It was a, it was a godsend, I'll tell you that right now. It uh, helped me get my trucking business going. And I'll tell you right now, I never hauled another load for them. I tried many a times. I used to call them for like months after. Well guys, my camera died, I had to plug it in. This is why I don't like running at daytime. We're, we're doing 59 miles an hour down a 70 mile an hour zone for no reason. And people are braking up there. You just, you can't get going. Well, it's starting to speed up now. But anywho, um, What I was saying is that I have never uh, hauled another load for him. I was like, yeah, I'll haul loads for you. You treated me super cool. And I would call them every once in a while and say, hey, you know, I'm in Wisconsin. You got any loads, you know? And they'd be, uh, no, we're, we got everything covered. Like, okay. I checked back with them many a times. And then on the load boards, you could put like your favorites or something like that, you know, that if they posted a load, then it would, it would probably, it would come up on your screen. Never saw loads from them again. That like camper up there has finally decided to move over. So maybe these guys are gonna start going now.
but I'm on my way. We'll see what happens here. And this load is going to be going to Circo in Madison, Wisconsin. I will explain this place very simply to you. This Circo place. That's what I think of it. I used to go in there like once a week and I just hate it. I do not like it. If you guys watch JBT Travels, you, you see him go in there. He goes in there once in a while. I, I do not like this place at all. It's home of me and union, union guys for unloading. They make you sit out in the parking lots, wait and stuff. And then you gotta deal with the overpriced lumpers like crazy. I, I just don't like the place. Well, hey guys, we are about a mile and a half away from our pickup. We're looking for White Wave Foods. I do not have a clue which side of the road it's on or nothing. distribution and receiving but it doesn't tell you the name of the place <laughs> 60 63 64 dry goods and receiving distribution and cold distribution of cold. It's a 34 degree load, so I'm guessing this way. Boop. Speed bump. Now speed bumps tell you that much.
probably should have parked back there. I am just not seeing any place to park here. Good though. Need to get a bit of exercise once in a while. There we go. We can park it right in here next to this guy. not a fun day just not a fun day it is 10 37 p.m. I am finally loaded I have 37,316 pounds heading off to Madison Wisconsin um, I don't know it's just a bunch of stuff creamer and stuff like that it's basically what it is like, it doesn't really say on here but when I was closing up the doors and putting my little knocks in, I saw it was all like creamer stuff and all this. Um, I came in here and the broker had called me and said, you know, hey, how we doing for this load and everything? I'm like, I'm heading in there now. Oh, okay, well, you know, the appointment's at 2. And I'm like, well, it's told 11. They said, no, no, appointment's at 2. And you're good to go. So I was like, all right. So I went in there and checked in. And the guy's like, oh, your appointment's not till 5. So you can't even be on the property. You got to leave and go down. There's a truck stop down the road. You can come back at 3. Like, whatever. So that's what I did as I left. And I guess I'm supposed to turn here. Um, I came from the other way. Oops, car coming. So that's what I did. I drove down there, sat down there for an hour and a half, two hours, whatever. Then I um, came back, checked in, and the guy's like, um, "Your load's not even. Your load's not ready. Uh, you're gonna need to leave." 
and they took my phone number and said, we'll call you. I was not a happy camper. I think John said this about me, talking about me when I first started this channel up. I have a hard time dealing with stupid and lazy people. It's just an issue I have. And so I, um, I did it, whatever. Went over there, went to sleep. And I kind of told the boss man, you know, hey, this is what they're saying. And uh, I'm telling you right now, if I don't hear the phone, whatever, I don't really care. In my old independent days, I wouldn't even stay there on it. I would have just left. Because I, I really hate supporting pla places like that. They treat the truck driver so bad. And then they just, you know, expect you to stay there and stuff. And, um... Uh, my old day, I would I would just call them up. Okay, see ya. I would just took off. And then when they called, you know, eight hours later, oh, we can load you now. Well, I'm already gone. Have fun with that load. But I stayed around, so I'm not the owner. And I stayed around here, and um. I came back over at nine o'clock and I checked in with him and he was like, oh, that loads not right. I, and I finally had enough. I looked at him and I said, listen here. I said, you can either load me or cancel the load. I says, but I'm done playing games. And the guy just looked at me and he's like, well, and I said, no, there's no discussion. I said, those are your two options. Figure it out. I said, I'm not gonna be playing games all day long with you people. And I'm trying to see if this is a loves or, yeah, it is. I'm gonna go in here and scale this load. I know it's not. Um, I don't look like they have a cat scale. So I, um, so they put me in a door and I think it took them a total of eight minutes to actually load me. <laughs> I just, it just dumb bothers me sometimes. Sit there for 10 hours and it takes them 10 minutes to load you. It's like, why? I mean, everybody was there was just yelling, screaming. It was, it was just, it was just not a good place. So we're off, 880 miles to go. Time to run to Madison, Wisconsin. So I shall catch you guys later. I hope that everyone out there is having themselves a great day, great night, as you're watching this here video. If you are not, well, I'm certainly going to just try that all over again tomorrow. And I will catch you guys later. See ya. Bye.